Kale, the Caledonian engine, had been in service for many years. It was starting to catch up with him. He often had trouble making steam and started to feel as if he was getting weaker with every train he carried. He brought this up with some of the engines at Winton Sheds one night. I've been feeling odd lately. I'm noticing that I'm frequently struggling with trains and I have trouble steaming in the morning. Maybe you need maintenance? I had the same issues once and it turned out... He doesn't need any maintenance. He's old. I beg your pardon? You know they say the hearing is always the first to go. No, that's not what I... I'm not old! Oh, don't be so dramatic. It was bound to happen eventually. I mean, look at the rest of us. We've been in service for a very long time. Nonsense. I have a few more years for my age catches up to me. Denial is also another sign. Oh, I don't have time for this. And with that, Kale stormed off to take his next train. As Kale backed down onto his train, he noticed that a much longer train sat beside him. Goodness me, whose train is that? His question was soon answered as a large pink tender engine back down onto the train. Oh, good evening. These are my trucks then? Kale didn't respond at first. He was too busy gawking at the long train and the engine pulling it. Um, hello? What? Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm not shunting today. Oh, evening, Cherry. I see you found your trucks. Ah, so these are mine. Well, thank you, Nate. No time to talk, though. These trains can't pull themselves. Right. Have a good night, then, Cherry. As Cherry puffed away, Lizzie puffed in and noticed Kale's expression. This gave her an idea. Well, 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 if you look at that, she's quite the engine, isn't she? I... I suppose so. You know, she's here on trial. If she proves to be suitable, she might take over our jobs. Maybe someone whose age is catching up to them? Lizzie didn't have to say any more, as Kale's expression gave her enough satisfaction. Throughout the month, as Kale went about his work, he would often see Cherry speeding by with either a passenger train or a large goods truck. And each time he would get more and more jealous. It would all come to a head as he entered the Winton Yard with his last train of the day. Cherry was also in the yard, backing down onto her last train. However, she wasn't paying attention and backed her train right through some buffers. Look what you've done, you clumsy engine. I knew you younger engines would be a bother. Oh, calm down. It was just an accident. They happen. And what's got you all fired up? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because you youngins are a danger on the rails, causing all these accidents without a care in the world. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, like you don't know. I literally don't get what you're even on about. Okay, that's enough. Kale, calm down a bit, will ya? You're making way too big of a deal out of this. It was a small bump, nothing too severe. Humph, just get my train ready. That's what you younger and more robust engines are meant to do. What was that all about, Kale? You're not usually this all high-tempered. You better apologize to her later. What? No, I won't. I refuse until she apologizes to me. What for? For being impatient and careless. You were the one being careless. You can't just put this on Cherry. She did nothing wrong. 
Sherry wasn't so thrilled after being accused by Kale. Are you serious right now? I'm sorry, but you're just an old fusspot. Go find someone else to do the work. I can't deal with your ridiculous nonsense! Fine, I don't need you to shunt anything anyway. As Cherry puffed away from the scene, William was overseeing the whole situation going down between the two engines and needed help. William puffed up to Kale to get his side of the story. Kale, what's wrong? Did something happen with Cherry? Of course I'm not okay. That stupid engine needs to stop being so sensitive. Kale, I'm not good with consulting quarrels. I recommend you go talk to Brandon and Dave. They're quite good at handling matters like these. Are you actually kidding me? I'd rather talk to a scrap engine than Brandon or Dave. Kale, please, just do it. Listen to them. Just trust me. They know what they are doing. Ugh, fine, I'll pay them a visit since you insist. Trust me, Kale, you won't regret this. I feel like on some level I will. Kale puffed away from the Wington Yards and headed to Braxton Sheds, where Brandon, Dave and Cherry were. When Kale saw Cherry, he ignored her until Dave glared at the Caledonian. Cherry? Cherry just looked at her buffers and ignored Kale, until Brandon spoke up. Oh, Kale, glad you made it! Cherry's told me some things about the tension in the yards. Now, while we don't take sides, we just need to hear from your side of the story before we can judge your characters. Well, I was distracted and accidentally bumped into the buffers. Nothing too much. Then Kale started to lash out on me as if I nearly caused a serious wreck. Hmm, I see. What's your side, Kale? Maybe next time look where you're going. You're on trial, and you don't think I'm worried about this audio. What if the controller finds out and sends me away? Then I'm done for, Sherry. Okay, easy now, Kale. No need to start this up again. Hmm, Kale? Are you jealous of Sherry because of her work ethic? I mean, she's been doing... What? <laughs> No, I don't admire her work ethic. She's careless and an absolute mess. I'm done here. Goodbye. Kale, please. Me and Brandon are just trying to help you. No, Dave. I'm not listening to your stupid therapy nonsense. I'm done. Kale, wait! Kale didn't listen. He angrily left the sheds, leaving a gloomy atmosphere behind. see sense and actually try to resolve this. I pray that will happen soon, for both of your sakes. After Kale's outburst, things have become a lot more calm. Soon, William reversed into the sheds, and Cherry was there resting up. Will? What are you doing here? I just came to see how you were doing. Well, I couldn't help but feel guilt. I feel like I haven't been treating Kale properly as of late. Nonsense. You've done nothing of the sort. She was the one who should be feeling guilty for not treating you right. It's not that. I'm just conscious of his feelings. I feel like there's something he's not telling us. Well, you might be right with that. He's not the kind of engine to make a huge fuss over a minor incident. He was a bit anxious about something. Your trial, perhaps. What? My trial? What? Why was Kale feeling anxious about that? I'm just here at the request of the manager. I think he was feeling threatened. I mean, your relatively new design of locomotive. Uh, maybe Kale fears that his time on working on the roster might be numbered with the advent of your arrival. Oh my, I never thought of it like that. I need to speak to him about it. It is probably for the best if you let him calm down for now. It will be a lot easier to cooperate with him when he isn't acting irrationally. I suppose so. The next morning, Kale had woken up extra early to finish some odd jobs around the railway. 
he could be found resting in the South Hall yards that afternoon. Eventually, Cherry arrived. Kale, am I interrupting? Kale was awoken, but said nothing negative to Cherry. Oh, um, afternoon, Cherry. No, you're not interrupting anything. Hey, I just want to apologize for my behavior yesterday. I was acting out of line. I just felt like with your arrival that my time working for this railway might be numbered. That's why I made such a huge fuss over your little incident. It's okay, Kale. I understand your intentions, and while positive, your attitude came off as negative. I appreciate your honesty with me now. Want to start over and be friends? I would like that very much. Thank you for understanding. And with that, both newly made friends stared into the sunset.